Hello everyone, this is Adam Anderson, Product Trainer at Maple Systems. Welcome back to our EB Pro Training Series. In the last video, we showed you how to set up trend displays so that you could visualize the data that you're collecting using data sampling with your Maple Systems HMI. In this video in EB Pro, we'll show you how to set up a history data display, which is this tabular format for showing recently sampled data. Let's take a look from the Data History tab select history data display. First you need to choose your data sampling object. This is your source of the data. If you choose to refresh automatically then every 10 seconds it will update the table with that most recently sampled data. Otherwise it will leave the data as is and if you change windows and come back later it will show the most recent data again. Next we can set a grid and we can choose options for different colors for our profile and text. We can set the time and date to be shown and then we can choose to either sort in descending or ascending order. With descending we're seeing the latest values that have been sampled every 10 seconds there. Finally with history control we can designate a register and enter in a value here to control which day's data is shown. If we hit F1 on our keyboards, we can pull up the help menu for this and then click on this option. So what it says here is that if we enter a zero into the designated history control register, it will show the data for the current date. If we enter a one, it will show yesterday's data. A two will be the day before and so on. Now, how many days worth of data you could show here with a history data display is dependent on how you set up your data sampling object to begin with. So let's go back and we'll look at how we set up the data sampling object in this project. Go to data sampling and we'll click on this one. This one we set with a preservation limit of seven days. So we could only go back seven days in time to view the values from then in the history data display. And we'll see in a moment how we can switch between the days easily using a set word object. But first let's finish adding that history data display to our window. So we've configured this as we like here from the data format tab. Here you can choose whether to show or hide your various channels from that data sampling that you've set up. And you can set the number of digits left or right of the decimal place here. From the title tab, if you wanted to, you could change the names of the channels. So you could have a level one, for example, level two and so on. So we'll click OK now. That's all we need to do for this history data display and we'll add it to our window now. We'll also add the history control elements here. So what we have is a numeric entry object so we could directly enter in a zero to show today's data, a one to show yesterday's data, and so on. Or we could use the set word object like you see here. So decrement jog minus and we can go down to a zero as the low limit or we could use an increment or jog plus and we can increment by one up to six as the high limit and when the value got to six we would then be seeing data from six days ago let's see how it works go to offline simulation so currently we're showing today's data denoted by the zero here and we'll see in a few seconds this will update for us there we go that's the most recently sampled data again only refreshes every 10 seconds but we're actually sampling and storing the data much more quickly than that with our data sampling as evidenced in this trend display again we set up the trend display in real-time mode history data display is meant for looking back at how the values changed say during a specific period of time now let's look at yesterday's data. We can do that with that set word object now. We enter a one and we see data from yesterday. We've only been running this project for two days in simulation. So if we go to the following day, then there's not gonna be any data there. We can just see yesterday's data and today's data. That's really all we need to know in order to set up a history data display in our projects in EB Pro. In the next video, we'll begin to discuss recipes for batch operations, and we'll show you how the recipe database feature works, as well as how you can transfer a recipe or the parameters for a job to your PLC and start that job running in your PLC. Check that out in the next episode.